After my sister stole my identity and ruined my credit, she showed up demanding that I fix the mess she created. A month ago, everything was fine. Or at least I thought it was. Then the letters started arriving. The first one came on a Monday morning. It was from some bank I'd never even heard of, thanking me for opening a line of credit. At first, I thought it was junk mail. But when I saw my full name, Jason, right there on the account information, I felt a chill run down my spine. I hadn't applied for any credit cards. Rachel, my girlfriend, was making breakfast when I showed her the letter. That's weird, she said, frowning. Did you check your credit report? I brushed it off. It's probably a mistake. Maybe they mixed me up with someone else. Big mistake. Over the next two weeks, more letters poured in. Two from other banks, one from a loan company, and one. This one nearly made me throw up from a collection agency. Apparently, I owed $3,000 on a credit card I'd never even seen. Rachel was the one who convinced me to check my credit report. She sat next to me at the kitchen table as I typed in my information. I'll never forget the way her face paled when the report loaded. My credit score had plummeted, and there were six accounts listed under my name, loans, credit cards, and even a payday advance. Jason, this isn't just a mistake, she said quietly. Someone's using your identity. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. Identity theft? That kind of stuff happened to strangers, not to me. I'm the guy who double-checks his bank statements every month and keeps his passwords in a notebook, not online. Rachel insisted I call the banks immediately. That night, I spent hours on hold, trying to explain to disinterested customer service reps that I hadn't applied for these accounts. Most of them were skeptical, and one even suggested I might be lying. Do you share your information with family or friends? One of them asked. I said no, but the question nagged at me. Who could have done this? A week later, I got my first real clue. Rachel and I were cleaning out the spare room when I found a crumpled receipt tucked under a pile of old bills. It was from a payday loan company, and the signature at the bottom was mine. Well, not mine, but close enough to fool someone who wasn't paying attention. But there was something off about the handwriting something familiar that I couldn't quite place. Then it hit me. Megan. Megan is my younger sister, and she's always had this dramatic, looping handwriting. The kind you'd see on a wedding invitation or a thank you card. We'd been close when we were kids, but as we got older, Megan changed. She started borrowing money and never paying it back. First from friends, then from me, then from our mom. I can't count the number of times she forgot her wallet when we went out to eat. I didn't want to believe it, but as I stared at the receipt, a sinking feeling told me I already knew the truth. I called Tyler, my best friend, because I needed someone to talk to before confronting Megan. Tyler's the kind of guy who keeps his cool no matter what, and I hoped he'd talk me out of my worst fears. Instead, he listened quietly as I explained everything. Jason, you need to confront her, he said. If it's Megan, she's not going to stop until you make her. Rachel agreed. You have to protect yourself, she said. This could ruin your life. So I did something I never thought I'd have to do. I called Megan and asked her to meet me at a diner we used to go to when we were kids. I didn't tell her why, I just said I needed to talk. When she walked in, she was all smiles, like nothing was wrong. She hugged me and started talking about some new show she was watching. For a moment, I almost chickened out, but then I thought about the letters, the bills, and the debt hanging over my head. Megan, I said, cutting her off mid-sentence. Did you use my name to apply for loans? Her face froze. For a second, I thought she was going to deny it. But then she laughed, actually laughed, and said, Oh, come on, Jason. It's not that big of a deal. Not that big of a deal? She launched into some rambling explanation about how she was in a tough spot and needed a little help. I was going to pay it back, she said. Like that made it okay. I just needed someone with decent credit to co-sign. And you weren't using yours anyway. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You stole my identity, Megan. I said, my voice rising. Do you have any idea what you've done to my life? She rolled her eyes. Don't be so dramatic. It's just money. You'll figure it out. I left the diner shaking with anger. Tyler was right. Megan wasn't going to stop until I made her. But how was I supposed to fix this? She'd wrecked my credit, left me with thousands of dollars in debt, and didn't even seem to care. When I got home, 
Rachel was waiting for me. How did it go? She asked. She admitted it, I said. But she doesn't think it's a big deal. Rachel looked furious. Jason, you need to report her. This is fraud. The idea of turning in my own sister made me sick. But as the bills piled up and the calls from creditors became more frequent, I started to wonder if I had any other choice. I never thought my sister would betray me like this. And now, I don't know what to do. After Megan admitted what she'd done, I thought things couldn't get worse. I was wrong. Over the next few days, the reality of my situation started to sink in. Every time I checked my phone, there was another voicemail from a creditor. Every time I opened my mailbox, there was another demand for payment. It was like living under siege. Rachel, bless her, was trying to be supportive, but I could tell she was losing patience. Jason, you can't just ignore this, she said one night as we sat on the couch. If you don't do something, this is going to follow you for years. I know, I said. But she's my sister. Rachel sighed. And you're the one paying the price for her mistakes. How is that fair? I decided to call Megan again. Maybe if I talked to her calmly, she'd understand how serious this was and agree to help fix it. But when I brought it up, she immediately went on the defensive. Jason, I said I'd pay it back, she snapped. You just need to give me time. You don't get it, I said. The banks are coming after me, Megan. My credit is ruined. I can't just wait around and hope you'll suddenly become responsible. She scoffed. You're so dramatic. It's not like you were planning to buy a house or something. That's when I realized she didn't care. She wasn't sorry. She didn't feel guilty. To her, this was just another mess she created and expected someone else to clean up. I decided to talk to my mom. Megan had always been her favorite, and I hoped maybe she could get through to her. But when I explained the situation, Mom's reaction floored me. Oh, Jason, she said, her voice full of concern. Megan's had such a hard time lately. You know how tough things have been for her since she lost her job. Mom, she committed fraud, I said, struggling to keep my voice steady. She stole my identity. She's your sister, Mom said. You have to help her. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Help her? What about me? What about the thousands of dollars in debt I was drowning in because of her? But mom just kept going on about how Megan was struggling and how family was supposed to stick together. Mom, she doesn't even feel bad about what she did, I said. She laughed about it. Mom frowned. She scared Jason. She doesn't know how to handle this. She's not scared. She's entitled. I snapped. And you're enabling her. That ended the conversation. Mom didn't want to hear it. She just shook her head and told me to be the bigger person, feeling completely alone. I turned to Tyler again. He was furious when I told him how Megan and my mom were reacting. She's treating you like a doormat, Jason, he said. And your mom's letting her. I know, I said. But what am I supposed to do? Report her? She's my sister. Look, I get it, Tyler said. But you can't just roll over and let her ruin your life. She needs to face the consequences, or she's never going to stop. Rachel agreed. You don't have to go to the police right away, she said. But at least talk to a lawyer or someone who can help you figure out your options. It wasn't what I wanted to hear, but I knew they were right. I couldn't keep pretending this would just go away. The next day, I made an appointment with a financial advisor. I brought all the letters, the receipts, and even a screenshot of my credit report. The advisor a no-nonsense woman named Ellen, listened carefully as I explained everything. This is serious, she said. You need to act quickly before this gets any worse. What can I do? I asked. Can I get the debt removed from my name? It's possible, but you'll need to prove the fraud, she said. That means filing a police report and providing evidence that you didn't open these accounts. The thought of filing a police report against Megan made my stomach churn, but Ellen didn't sugarcoat it. If you don't do this, you'll be stuck with this debt for years. It'll affect everything. Getting a car loan, renting an apartment, even applying for some jobs. I left the meeting feeling overwhelmed but determined. I couldn't keep letting Megan control my life. When I got home, I decided to give Megan one last chance. I called her and told her what the financial advisor had said. You need to come clean, I told her. If you admit what you did, we can figure out a way to fix this together. 
But Megan was as dismissive as ever. I'm not going to jail over this, she said. You'll just have to deal with it. That's not how this works, I said. You don't get to screw up my life and walk away. You're so selfish, she shot back. You're supposed to be my brother. Family helps each other. Helping you doesn't mean letting you ruin my life, I said. This is your mess, Megan. You need to take responsibility. But she just hung up on me. That night, Rachel sat with me as I filled out the forms to file a police report. I felt like I was betraying my own family, but what choice did I have? Megan had left me no other option. When I finally hit submit, Rachel squeezed my hand. You're doing the right thing, she said. She needs to learn that actions have consequences. I nodded, but I didn't feel relieved. All I could think about was how much worse this was going to get before it got better. Filing the police report felt like crossing a line I could never uncross. I'd always been the kind of person who avoided conflict, especially with family. But Megan had pushed me too far, and now there was no turning back. I didn't hear anything for a couple of days after submitting the report. Part of me hoped it would all quietly resolve itself, but deep down, I knew better. The first sign of fallout came when my mom called. Jason, she said, her voice trembling. What have you done? I did what I had to do, Mom, I said. Megan left me no choice. She's your sister. Mom shouted. How could you turn her in like that? Do you know what this could do to her life? What about my life? I snapped. She's destroyed my credit, put me in thousands of dollars of debt, and doesn't even care. I tried to work it out with her, Mom. She refused. Mom was crying now, but I didn't feel guilty. I'd spent weeks being the victim, and I was done. She needs to face the consequences, I said firmly. If you keep enabling her, she's never going to change. Mom hung up on me. The next few days were a whirlwind of stress. I had to provide additional documents to the police and spend hours on the phone with creditors explaining the situation. Some were sympathetic, but most were not. They wanted their money, and they didn't care who paid it. Meanwhile, Megan was making herself scarce. She wasn't answering my calls or texts, and I had no idea where she was. That's when Tyler called with a new piece of the puzzle. Jason, I think I know who's helping Megan, he said. You remember Zach, her boyfriend? Zach. The guy was bad news from the start. He had a string of failed businesses, a shady past, and a reputation for skipping out on rent. Megan had introduced him to the family about a year ago, but none of us liked him. He was charming in a sleazy kind of way, always quick with an excuse for why he couldn't hold down a job. What about him? I asked. I ran into a guy who used to work with Zach, Tyler said. Apparently, Zach's been involved in some sketchy stuff. Using fake names, scamming people. It wouldn't surprise me if he's the one who convinced Megan to do this. It made sense. Megan wasn't exactly a criminal mastermind. She was impulsive and reckless, but she didn't have the brains to pull off something this elaborate on her own. Zach, on the other hand, was the kind of guy who could talk his way into or out of anything. The next day, I decided to dig deeper. Rachel helped me comb through Megan's social media accounts, looking for any signs of Zach or their schemes. Most of her profiles were private, but one old Instagram account was still public. It was mostly pictures of Megan with her friends, but one post caught my eye. It was a selfie of Megan and Zach in front of a flashy car. The caption read, Making moves money with wings hashtag hustle hashtag big dreams. The post was from a month ago, the same time the fraudulent accounts had started popping up. I stared at the photo, my anger boiling over. She wasn't just ruining my life, she was flaunting it. I decided to confront Zach. It was a risky move but I needed answers. Tyler came with me for backup, and we tracked Zach down at a dive bar he was known to frequent. He was sitting at the bar, nursing a beer and chatting with a couple of guys who looked just as shady as he did. Zach, I said, walking up to him. We need to talk. He turned and gave me a lazy smile. Jason, my man, what brings you here? I didn't bother with pleasantries. I know what you and Megan have been doing. His smile faltered for a second but then he laughed. I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't play dumb, Tyler said, stepping up beside me. We know you're involved in the fraud. You're the one who put her up to this, aren't you? Zach leaned back in his chair, still grinning but with a hint of nervousness now. Look, whatever Megan did, 
that's on her. I'm just a guy trying to make a living by stealing other people's identities? I shot back. I've already filed a police report, Zach. It's only a matter of time before they come for you, too. That wiped the grin off his face. You're bluffing. Try me, I said, pulling out my phone. I've got the receipts, Zach. Your name's all over her social media, and I'm sure the cops will find more if they dig into her accounts. For a moment, he looked like he might take a swing at me, but then he backed down, muttering something under his breath and storming out of the bar. The confrontation left me rattled but determined. I knew Zach was guilty, and I was more convinced than ever that Megan had been manipulated by him. But that didn't absolve her of responsibility. She'd made the choice to go along with it, and now she was dragging me down with her. The next morning, I got a call from the police. They'd started their investigation and wanted to ask me more questions about Megan and the accounts. I told them everything I knew, including my suspicions about Zach. Do you think she acted alone? The officer asked. No, I said. She's reckless, but she's not a criminal mastermind. Zach was definitely involved. The officer thanked me and said they'd be in touch. I hung up feeling a mix of relief and dread. Things were moving forward, but I had no idea how it would end. That night, Megan finally called me. I almost didn't answer, but curiosity got the better of me. Jason, she said, her voice shaky. Why are you doing this to me? Are you serious? I said, you stole my identity, Megan. You've left me thousands of dollars in debt, and you don't even care. I didn't mean for it to get this bad, she said, starting to cry. Zach said it would be easy, that no one would notice. I wanted to feel sorry for her, but I couldn't. You need to come clean, I said. The police are already investigating. If you cooperate, maybe they'll go easier on you. She started sobbing. I can't go to jail, Jason. I can't. Then you should have thought about that before you did this, I said. I'm done protecting you. I hung up, feeling a pang of guilt, but also a sense of closure. Megan had made her bed, and now she'd have to lie in it. The next few days were a blur of calls, meetings, and stress. Rachel and Tyler were my rocks, keeping me grounded as I navigated the chaos. I didn't know what was going to happen to Megan or Zach, but I was finally starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. For the first time in weeks, I felt like I might actually get my life back. But I also knew the worst was yet to come. It didn't take long for everything to come crashing down. The investigation into Megan's fraud gained momentum, and things started moving faster than I was ready for. When the police called to let me know they'd issued a warrant for her arrest, I felt a weird mix of relief and dread. This was what I wanted. Justice, accountability. But the thought of my sister being arrested made me sick. The next day, mom called me again, her voice shaking. Jason, they're looking for Megan. Do you know anything about this? I hesitated. Yeah, I do. I filed a report. Mom, I told you this was serious. She broke down crying. Jason, how could you? She's your sister. She's not a criminal. She just made a mistake. She stole my identity, mom. I said, trying to keep my voice calm. She ruined my credit and left me with thousands of dollars in debt. This isn't just a mistake. She's scared, Mom said. She told me she wants to fix things, but she's afraid you'll never forgive her. I've given her plenty of chances to fix this, I said. She refused every time. This isn't on me anymore. Mom kept pleading with me to drop the charges, but I stood my ground. For the first time in my life, I wasn't going to let Megan or anyone else guilt me into backing down. A couple of days later, Megan showed up at my apartment. I hadn't seen her in weeks, and she looked like she'd been through hell. Her usually flawless makeup was smudged, her hair was a mess, and her eyes were red and swollen. Jason, please, she said as soon as I opened the door. You have to help me. I didn't invite her in. Why should I? You didn't care when you were ruining my life. She started crying again, but I wasn't moved. I didn't mean for it to get this bad, she said. Zach said it would be easy, that we'd pay it back before anyone noticed. So it was Zach's idea? I asked, crossing my arms. She hesitated, then nodded. He said you'd never even find out. He handled everything. I didn't even know about some of the loans until after he took them out. Then why didn't you come to me when you realized what was happening? 
I asked. Why didn't you try to fix it? I was scared, she said. And Zack kept saying he'd take care of it. Where is Zack now? I asked. Her face crumpled. He left me. As soon as he heard about the police, he disappeared. I almost laughed at the irony. Megan had betrayed me for this guy. And now he betrayed her. You made your choice, I said. And now you're going to have to deal with the consequences. Megan stayed outside my apartment for nearly an hour, begging me to help her. I finally called Rachel, who came home from work early and convinced Megan to leave. She's desperate, Rachel said after Megan finally left. But she's not your responsibility anymore. I knew she was right, but it didn't make me feel any better. No matter how angry I was, Megan was still my sister. Watching her fall apart was harder than I thought it would be. Things took another turn when I got a call from the loan officer, Derek. He was the guy who had initially flagged the accounts as suspicious, and he'd been working with the police to track down Megan and Zach. We've uncovered some interesting information, Derek said. It looks like Zach used multiple aliases to apply for loans in your name and a few others. Others? I asked. Yeah. Megan wasn't the only one he roped into this. He's been running scams with several people using their names to secure loans and credit cards, I felt a strange sense of vindication. Megan wasn't innocent. She'd still used my identity, but it was clear that Zach had been the mastermind. So what happens now? I asked. The police are building a case against him, Derek said. And Megan, too. They'll both face charges. I thanked him for the update and hung up, feeling a flicker of hope. Maybe, just maybe, this nightmare was finally coming to an end. Later that night, Tyler and I were sitting on my balcony, having a couple of beers. You did the right thing, he said. Megan needs to learn that she can't keep getting away with this stuff. I know, I said, but it still sucks. She's my sister, Ty. I didn't want it to come to this. She made her choices, Tyler said, and she knew what she was doing. Don't let her guilt you into thinking this is your fault. We sat in silence for a while watching the city lights. For the first time in weeks, I felt a tiny bit of the weight on my shoulders start to lift. But Megan wasn't done yet. A few days later, I came home to find her sitting on the steps outside my building. She looked even worse than before, and as soon as she saw me, she jumped up and started begging again. Jason, please, she said. I'll do whatever it takes. Just tell the police it was all Zach's idea. I shook my head. I already told them the truth. I'm not lying for you, Megan. She grabbed my arm, her nails digging into my skin. You're my brother. You're supposed to protect me. Protect you? I said, pulling my arm away. You stole my identity, Megan. You ruined my credit. And now you want me to cover for you? No. I'm done. Her face twisted with rage. You're such a hypocrite. She spat. You act like you're so perfect, but you've made mistakes too. None of my mistakes involved committing fraud. I shot back. You did this to yourself. She stood there for a moment, glaring at me, and then she stormed off. I watched her go, feeling a strange mixture of anger and sadness. I didn't know if I'd ever be able to forgive her for what she'd done. That night, Rachel and I sat down to talk about everything. Do you think you'll ever reconcile with her? She asked. I don't know, I said honestly. I want to but not if she doesn't take responsibility. She can't just keep walking all over me. Rachel nodded. You're doing the right thing, Jason. But I know it's hard. It is, I said. But I'm tired of letting her control my life. It's time I put myself first for once. For the first time in a long time, I felt like I was taking back control. But I also knew that the road ahead wouldn't be easy. Megan had pushed me to my breaking point. And now it was up to her to decide what kind of person she wanted to be. It was strange, waking up one day and realizing that the chaos Megan had caused wasn't controlling my every waking thought anymore. The investigation was out of my hands, and for the first time in weeks, I felt a sense of clarity. But the relief was bittersweet. My sister, the person I'd shared so many childhood memories with, had become someone I'd barely recognized. Two weeks after Megan stormed off, I got a call from the police. They'd arrested Zach. He was picked up trying to cross state lines, the officer said. We've charged him with multiple counts of identity theft, wire fraud, and conspiracy. And Megan? I asked, bracing myself. She turned herself in this morning, 
the officer said. Her lawyer negotiated for her to cooperate in exchange for a reduced sentence. She's already provided a statement implicating Zach as the ringleader. I didn't know how to feel. On one hand, I was glad Megan was finally taking responsibility, but on the other hand, it hurt to know it had taken the threat of jail time to get her to do the right thing. The next day, I got a call from mom. She was sobbing so hard I could barely understand her. Jason, they arrested her, she cried. Megan's in jail. How could you let this happen? I didn't let anything happen, mom, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. She did this to herself. She's your sister, mom said, as if that somehow excused everything. She's not a bad person, Jason. She just made a mistake. It wasn't a mistake, mom, I said firmly. It was a pattern. Megan's been taking advantage of people for years, and you've been letting her. This time, she went too far. Mom didn't want to hear it. She kept insisting that Megan didn't deserve this, that I should have protected her, but I was done letting her guilt me into backing down. I told her I loved her, but if she couldn't understand why I'd done what I did, then maybe we needed some space. Over the next few weeks, I focused on rebuilding my life. The financial advisor, Ellen, helped me dispute the fraudulent accounts, and most of the debt was eventually wiped off my credit report. It wasn't an easy process. Some creditors were more cooperative than others, but with Rachel's support, I managed to get through it. Tyler stayed by my side, too, always ready with a joke or a beer when things got too overwhelming. You're almost there, man, he said one night as we sat on his porch. Soon, this will just be a bad memory. I hope so, I said, but it still feels like there's a part of me that's missing. Tyler didn't have to ask what I meant. He knew I was talking about Megan. About a month after Megan turned herself in, I got a letter from her. It was handwritten, in that looping script I'd always recognized as hers, but it was shaky and uneven, like she'd been crying while writing it. Dear Jason, I don't even know where to start. I guess I just want to say I'm sorry. I know that probably doesn't mean much after everything I've done, but I mean it. I was selfish and stupid, and I hurt you in ways I can never take back. You were right about Zach. He used me and I was too blind to see it. But that doesn't excuse what I did. I made the choice to go along with him, and now I'm paying the price. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I hope one day you can find it in your heart to at least talk to me again. I miss my brother. I miss the days when we could laugh and joke, and everything wasn't so messed up. I'm trying to be better. I really am. But it's hard in here, Jason. I don't know if I can do it without you. Love. Megan. I stared at the letter for a long time, trying to figure out how I felt. Part of me wanted to tear it up and throw it away. But another part of me, the part that remembered all the good times we'd shared before everything went wrong, wanted to believe she was sincere. I didn't respond to Megan's letter right away. I needed time to think. Rachel and I talked about it that night. Do you believe her? Rachel asked. I don't know, I admitted. She's lied so many times before but this feels different. Rachel nodded. If she's really trying to change, maybe this is your chance to rebuild your relationship. But only if you're ready. That was the thing. I wasn't sure I was ready. Forgiving Megan would mean opening myself up to the possibility of being hurt again, and I wasn't sure I could handle that. A few weeks later, I decided to visit her. It was a cold, rainy afternoon when I walked into the county jail, my stomach in knots. Megan looked different when they brought her into the visitation room. She'd lost weight, her hair was tied back in a simple ponytail, and her eyes were red and tired. She didn't look like the carefree, reckless sister I'd always known. She looked broken. Jason, she said, her voice cracking. Thank you for coming. I almost didn't, I said honestly. I didn't know if I could face you after everything. She nodded, tears streaming down her face. I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to see me either. We sat in awkward silence for a moment before she spoke again. I'm so sorry, Jason. For everything. I know I can't undo what I did, but I'm trying to make it right. I'm in therapy, and they're making me take financial literacy classes. I know it's not enough, but it's a start. I wanted to believe her. I really did. But trust wasn't something she could earn back with a few words. It's going to take time, Megan, I said. I can't just forgive you overnight. I understand, she said, 
wiping her eyes. But I'm going to keep trying. I want to be someone you can trust again. As I left the jail, I felt a strange mix of hope and sadness. Megan was taking steps to change, but I knew it would be a long road before things could ever go back to normal. If they ever could. In the months that followed, life slowly started to feel normal again. I got a promotion at work. Rachel and I moved into a nicer apartment, and I started focusing on my own goals instead of cleaning up Megan's messes. It felt good to take control of my life. Megan kept writing to me, and while I didn't respond to every letter, I read them all. Little by little, I started to see a different side of her, a side that was genuinely trying to change. She told me about her therapy sessions, her plans for the future, and how much she missed our family. Mom and I eventually patched things up, too. She apologized for taking Megan's side and admitted that she'd been enabling her for years. It wasn't an easy conversation, but it brought us closer than we'd been in a long time. About a year after the whole ordeal began, Megan was released on probation. She reached out to me, asking if we could meet for coffee. I agreed, but with reservations. I needed to see if the Megan sitting across from me would be the same person who had betrayed me, or if she had truly changed. When I saw her, I barely recognized her. She looked healthier, calmer, and there was a humility in her eyes that I'd never seen before. Jason, she said, I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I hope I can earn it. I took a deep breath. You've got a long way to go, Megan, but I'm willing to try. It wasn't a perfect resolution, but it was a start. And for the first time in a long time, I felt like we both had a chance to move forward. 